Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Well, at 7 hours and 55 minutes into the 7th day of March uh, 2023, it's time to start the vlog again. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to finish the vlog today, in, well, within the 24-hour period anyways. So the vlogging goes on within 24 hours, but the vlogging day doesn't necessarily end uh, at any particular time, at any particular point in time. Or start, because it depends on uh, what my schedule is. Ooh. But I have been having a difficult time uh, adjusting the new um, making the needed adjustments to rearrange the upgrades to uh, Cyborg Alpha TV Network. That includes Kawhi TV uh, the vlogs, and there's a couple other things coming out as well, uh, that will sort of, uh, bring things, bring more content out, but it's not going to all be on YouTube anymore. Before it was, as a vlog, everything was going to be on YouTube, but YouTube has decided to go and censor things, so, uh, it's a rather sensitive thing, so you just don't do that anymore. Uh, I just finished watching, uh, my vlogs, the, the, the my TV is YouTube, my TV are vlogs. And there's still enough content out on YouTube that uh, uh, you don't really need uh, cable TV. So <laughs> YouTube is it. Uh, my brother's sort of finding that out as well. He's uh, in the process of moving off a of cable. He's finding, trying to find enough content for him to watch that uh, he'll be happy uh, dropping cable and moving on to something else. Because things are, the, the problem is that things are getting too expensive. And as people get laid off, and my brother just got laid off, um... You have to sort of, well, I like this, but I can't afford it anymore. And so this is where sort of things come in. Is that well, why am I choosing Android? Why am I going off off of cables? That's because I can't afford it anymore. It doesn't matter what the package is. I can't afford it. Uh, and this is happening to a lot of people. But well, and they said, well, why don't you buy American? Because it's too expensive. Why don't you buy? You know, and people say, well. It's just a little bit more. I said, but then I don't. It's just a little bit more. But if you don't have that little bit more, you just don't have the money to spend. Then you're not going to buy it anyways, because you don't have the money to spend. But but the thing is, it doesn't make, it doesn't click to people. If you're not in a situation where you're tight with your expenditures, then you're never going to think like that. It's only when you're tight with your, the money that you have, and this is certainly the case here, is when you're doing exploration. You're going into situations blind, and you learn as you go. And when you hit that that spot called infinite knowledge, prior to that you have finite knowledge, and the finite knowledge it gives you uh, a a final st resting point where you can say, "I'm an expert. I'm a guru. I'm a this. I'm a that." You give yourself a title. You give yourself some status because of your expertise. What happens if you step into infinite knowledge, where I am, then all of a sudden you drop back down to middle school because you never really get and you never get further than that because the point that you're trying to get to is infinitely far away. So you really don't you fundamentally don't move from middle school where you have some degree of grasp of things, but you. You're still pretty green. You're still pretty sort of wet behind the ears. And you don't have the level of confidence that you need to be, oh, I'm an expert. Uh, that's because you, there's still a lot more, to, lot, lot more to learn. Even though you don't necessarily know that there is a lot more to learn uh, because you haven't learned it yet and, and you're going into new areas that you really haven't experienced before. This, this is part of the exploration that goes on. This is part of of being an explorer. You're going into areas that are unknown. And I hit that when I began uh, my stuff with Cyborg Alpha. That's what I had sort of stepped into. I stepped into a realm where I realized that the knowledge, the path I was on, the research I was doing, 
was infinite, infinite in, in uh, distance in terms of what could be learned. And at that point, I dropped right back down to middle school again and haven't left there, haven't left there since. So uh, I've been in middle school for more than 10 years. <laughs> I've been a slow learner. Uh, but this, this is sort of the nature. This is why our, our life as Cyborg Alpha is structured the way it is. That we have the infinite, I am the infinite tween. Uh, I've been working on my kitchen a little bit more. Uh, the, I have actually now, I'm working on two kitchens uh, uh, for uh, the Kauai Tea House. Uh, the immediate kitchens are short order. Uh, 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 they're designed to produce food on a quick basis. Uh, and then there's, there's also eventually to produce snacks and, and uh, 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 cookies, cakes, and cookies, cakes, and candies. Uh, the standard or the standard fare for a, a tea house. Uh, then there's specialty coffees and specialty drinks, and I've got all, got all that on order, so all done already. Uh, it's very easy to do with a hand blender to, to customize your own drink. So basically. Uh, instead of paying uh, $15 for a Starbucks, you know, uh, one of those big cups, uh, you're spending like, maybe maybe $2 in terms of uh, what the overall cost of what you're putting into it. So uh, that's where things are now. It's just a matter of I want to try to get uh, filming the film outside because it's been it's been uh, we were just finishing the ma major st snowstorm. The, there's still a fair amount of snow on the ground, uh, and so it give you a sort of the, the, a look at the aftermath of a massive snowstorm. So uh, I think I'm going to leave that here. Um, just hang off back to bed again. I am finishing my pit stop, and I did meditation during 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 my pit stop. When I go back to bed, it's not going to be a restful sleep because. I'm a lucid dreamer, and a lot of my dreams are very active. It's an adventure, so so it's kind of like kind of like the phrase, "I need a vacation from a vacation." <laughs> I need sleep from my sleep, uh, and that's where we are right now. So I'll see you in the next segment. Well, we're finally recording outside. Uh, let me give you a time and date stamp. Can't see the watch, so <laughs> I'm assuming it's around five o'clock in the evening. So, uh, that's uh, 17 hours, and uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna check here. Got to change. And okay, it's 16 hours and 40 minutes into the seventh day oh, i think it's the seventh day uh of march uh 2000 uh 23 and we're outside uh, i've got the new system operational uh so i've got the microphone attached And so let me give you a, a view of the surroundings. Well, this is our view here. And of course, we had to have, we had to stop in order to switch the uh, camera from front to back. Uh, one of the things I wanted to test out in this with this microphone, as we have a wind here, is background noise. So this is the snow that came in. This was sort of caused a large chunk of the delays in it snow very heavily. The snow is uh, quite crunchy. It came in very wet. It came in very wet and now I'm quite crunchy. So let's go around the front and see how much there is actually here. And this is one of the things you can do with uh, a microphone. It's uh, a good microphone if you pick up background noise. That's what you want to do is you want to pick up your background noise. And they're no longer piling, well, no room to pile up snow uh, in our courtyard. Uh, so they pile it in the uh, 
center there, and it's just kind of a nice little mountain. Um, the kids do enjoy that. There's no mountain. One of the things you can hear as the wind blows, you can hear the creaking of trees. And the trees will actually creak more in the winter than they will in the summer. That's because the water in the trunk is frozen. And I remember when I was up north uh, two, three years ago, uh, you can hear a tree crack and fall over. So they don't only fall over in summer or in large storms, but they uh, fall over uh, in the winter as uh, the trunk is frozen. Uh, there's a bit of a wind that blows it too hard. And uh, what you end up is you end up with a tree that falls in the forest. So this is it. Observation is not necessarily what you see, but more or less, more often than not, what you hear. So you can sort of see that there is a nest uh, up in the trees there. Uh, but normally in the winter, in the, in the summer, you don't see that because of the foliage. So the thing is, you look at these bundles, you just where are the birds? Where are you know? Where, where do I hear them? The other thing is, is that that nest is large enough to hold a large chunk of squirrels or any animal. So what they'll do is they'll nest in holes in the tree. And that's what woodpeckers do. Woodpeckers will come in open holes that the uh, animals live in. So every tree has at least one or not two two uh, nests in it. So this one has a nest up there at the top, right there. That's that one there, and there's three nests on top one. I don't see one on this tree. Well, there's one over there. Here comes the helicopter. There's a highway near us, so they're doing the track. This is very nice out here. I, said, I do enjoy observational work. Alright, so this is centered better now. We'll go back inside and uh, I'll show you what the setup looks like looks like in the mirror. We'll have to change the camera around for that. As I said before, observation is not simply what you see but what you hear as well. Then of course there's also the sense of smell is what you smell. <laughs> uh, and it is the animals you actually identify themselves. You know, people wonder why dogs roll around and the things they roll around them. Well, it's because the sense of smell is how they identify them. This is this is part of the of the hunting acumen. So let's get in here. Let's see if we can see ourselves in the mirror. There's the bathroom. Yeah. Take a look and see what's this, what's this here. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so this is the setup here. This is with this is the monopod, uh, the selfie stick, and then of course the sound system is carried in a nice little bag. Okay, there's the microphone there that's hanging out the side, and it picks up everything. So uh, it took a while to sort of put everything together and. So now this is uh, kind of uh, the, way we, the way we vlog. This is our formal vlogging system. Well, it is uh, five hours, five hours and six minutes uh, into the eighth day of March uh, 2023. And once again, we've had a little bit of a hiccup on our Kauai Tea House TV channel. On YouTube, guess what? They flagged the national anthem for about five, ten seconds because it was being sung by Leanne Rhymes as a copyright issue. The thing is, because you don't know what they're going to do, you have no idea how they're going to readjust their rules. The best thing is to do is get rid of the thing entirely. So, here it goes. Oh, say can I see... The U.S. is no longer free. 
Oh, that's going to have to do it for now. I'll voice, do a voiceover, do the editing on the ending, and uh, probably fix it up for tomorrow. So it depends on uh, how, how things... It depends on how things go. It should cover. It should be enough. Uh, because there's a little short slurp at the ending is my identification. Who I am. And I should say who we are. A cyborg alpha. That's my history. The picture of Cyborg Alpha is a cryptic message once again that, that, that identifies who I am and, what the, and who Cyborg Alpha is. What the theory is. The theory is embedded in the picture. But the thing is, a lot of people don't seem to understand this. And so what happens, you have, on YouTube, because people complain just about for everything. Everything is an issue. Everything is offensive. There's nothing you can really say or do or move that doesn't isn't going to offend somebody at, at some point in time. And I think it's these people who will say, they, oh, we're woke, we're open, we're tolerant. They're not. The only time they're tolerant is if you agree with what they say. As soon as you disagree with what they say, you don't have to be Republican or anything like that. You just have to disagree with what they say, the way they think. And all of a sudden, you're the enemy. And you have to be dealt with severely. And the thing is, this is the history of the left. The left have always been like this. If you go into history, any type of history, you'll see that the left has always been like this. Not everybody on the left is like this, but you'll find that, that what we call the pawns. Now, various different political teams, sides, and, and, and groupings uh, will use pawns, use people who are active to bring forward issues. And they're there to club people in over the head and just basically beat them to, to a pulp uh, because they don't agree with what they think they should agree with. In other words, instead of simply saying, oh, I disagree with you, they beat you up because you disagree with them. This is what's going on now. If you don't agree with somebody on, on some particular platform, they go they go they go, they go crazy. And I was watching, ironically enough, watching uh, Mork and Mindy, even though now I'm watching my vlogs. Uh, I'm a vlog watcher on YouTube, so, but I'm also a vlogger. And the thing is, is that it is an interesting environment to watch. Uh, a, a large chunk of these shows have a good deal of history. And this was, uh, Mork and Mindy was in the 1980s. And at that point in time, the, uh, they were still called mental hospitals. And in the mental hospital, although they present them as very kind and very, very generous, uh, the doctors would feel free to experiment on the patients, even without their consent. They would experiment on them. They were guinea pigs. Oh, they're just crazy anyway, so they just experiment on them. Well, this became an issue uh, for Geraldo Rivera, and he made it an issue. He, goes, he went up there and does what a reporter does. He exposes it, and everyone goes, goes crazy over it. This is what you see now in the media. And promptly, the mental hospitals are shut down. And where do the uh, patients go? Well, they go back out into the streets. They become the next generation of homeless. And why are all these homeless people doing what they're... Why are we seeing all these people, you know, go, going crazy in the streets and beating people up? Why do we see people pushing people onto the subway tracks? Simple, because the world now has become the mental institution. The mental institution, the one that was supposed to house the people and help them get better, which they never did, uh, is now the streets. We're now in an open-air asylum. And the thing is, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with an open-air asylum? And that's another very complex, but... Uh, nonetheless, things that uh, can be worked forward. You can, you can sort of pull yourself out of the environment and into something more significant uh, by doing that. So, uh, anyways, um, I'm going to try to vlog more outside tomorrow night. I was supposed to do it tonight, but I just when I came back, it just 
wasn't feeling it, didn't have the energy to go out and do that. So, uh, I'll try again to vlog outside tomorrow night. Uh, we'll try again with the uh, microphone system. There were some issues, but, you know, th this is what it is. Experimentation is never going to be perfect. You don't cover your mistakes. You show the mistakes, even if, as they are. And you try to move forward. You try to correct and You try to make things better. Uh, anyways, um, I will see you in the next segment. The U.S. is no longer free. Oh, say can I see? The U.S. is no longer free. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.